गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस दिस इवनिंग फॉर समथिंग विच ऑफकोर्स वी हैव स्टिल इन मेमोरी वी इन द ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ ईयर ऑफ सेलिब्रेशन फॉर दिस अकेजन वी हैड विक्रम बाईज फैमिली हियर एंड वी रिमेंबर इट इट्स एब्सोल्यूटली फील्स लिटिल नॉस्टैल्जिक दैट वी आर गेन गोइंग टू हैव विक्रम बाई so friends respected shri kartike bhai divyesh bhai nilesh bhai joshi saheb and sir uh, pankaj bhai uh, this evening we are going to be taking the theme little different and certainly thanks to bikesh bhai for the theme also on on the on dr vikram sara bhai's legacy and his 104th birth anniversary uh, that we are commemorating and uh, occasion where we have the stalwarts including you know scientists like nilesh bhai and joshi saheb who is then phd on so my my role of course is to introduce the august speakers here and I, my role is also to welcome them for getting the best out of what knowledge they can share with us and of course we have kartike bhai himself who can who will who, as our chief guest uh, uh, who who will of course share some very valuable aspects of the legacy of vikram bhai i will also mention that this auditorium this whole complex this whole institute as is also one of the leg one of the so many legacies of dr vikram sara bhai and certainly the city in that sense is from knowledge point of view a legacy of uh, dr sara bhai Uh, i'll i'll introduce the speakers one uh, one by one and then uh, we'll take the uh, this further for the panel to give their thoughts joshi saheb dr padmanab joshi uh, ma in political science and phd on dr vikram sara bhai a study on innovative leadership and institution building so probably uh, sir you might be the only person who would have done phd you know so intense on dr sara bhai and and he has compiled and edited biographical volume on dr vikram sara bhai he has written two books on dr vikram sara bhai in gujarati and english and he has worked at the isro iim and nehru foundation dr joshi met lyricist shailendra the other angle of or facet of dr joshi Uh, who introduced him as, uh, to maestro Jay, shankar jay kishan and dr joshi also wrote a musical biography of, doc, uh, of shankar jay, jay, jay kishan in gujarati may i request uh, amit bhai uh, dr amit bhai to please fe uh, felicitate dr joshi with her book and uh, a flower and we have with us dr nilesh desai uh, a distinguished scientist currently a director of space application center in ahmedabad uh, he has contributed 37 years to the illustrious engineering and research career uh, and extensively in design and development of isro's microwave radars don't ask me we can ask him that <laughs> but that's the you know except that's that's a high tech innovation high tech you know science uh, and and that's what we can make out a, a, a scientist and many state of the art technologies that he has developed under his leadership he has mentored the design of world class courses at satellite on satellite communication awarded iesa uh, by dr iesa is indian electronic and semiconductor association award by, by dr uh, of dr abdul abdul uh, apj abdul kalam for outstanding contribution he is a life member of indian society of remote sensing indian society geomatics astronautical society of india and indian society of system for science and engineering and he is right now service uh, serving as a vice president of the indian society of uh, system for science and uh, engineering may i request uh, our president divyesh bhai to please uh, uh, felicitate dr desai and we have with us professor pankaj gajjar uh, pankaj bhai is a head in department of physics electronics and space sciences university school of sciences and gujarat university ahmedabad he is having 33 years of teaching and research experience 
His field of interest is solid state physics, condensed matter theory, computational matter material science, non-linear dynamics, physical education, and science popularization. May I request uh, Unmesh Bhai, please, to <coughs> honor Pankaj Bhai, please. Thank you, Unmesh Bhai. Uh, then we have with us our president, Divyesh Bhai. Divyesh Bhai is the president, Ahmedabad Management Association, executive director of Orset Hydraulics, BTEC uh, in, in BTEC and master in MBA, MBA finance, entrepreneur for 30 years. He's an honorary secretary of Gujarat Cancer Society and founder and trustee of charity to support rural school education and has adopted Village Girls Primary School in Porbandar. Uh, Divyesh Bhai, we, have, we, we, we want him to felicitate others and so I'm coming to Kartike Bhai. Kartike Bhai, of course, our chief guest. Chief guest uh, Kartike Bhai, we everybody, all of us know him so well and has also been a very important pillar of Ahmedabad Management Association. Uh, Kartike Bhai is a founder director of Center for Environment Education est established in 1984. One of the world's leading environment educators and dedicated community builders. He holds tripos in natural science from Cambridge University and his post graduation from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Contributed immensely in field of education for sustainable development, development involved closely with UNESCO, UNEP, and UN bodies and convention. He is the chairman at, of Shabarmati Ashram. Chairman, uh, Chair of the Governing Council of Earth Charter International, recognized globally for his pioneering work in ed uh, environment education and sustainable development with several national and international awards including Brandwain Award, Brandwain Award, Tree of Learning Award, C. V. Raman, Sir C. V. Raman Memorial Award and of course mm, uh, uh, Padma Shri, uh, one of the highest civilian awards. May I request Bikesh Bhai please to a fel felicitate our chief guest, Kartike Bhai. <laughs> Bikesh Bhai, I will hold you for a while over here because Bikesh Bhai is going to give us a theme address. But uh, Bikesh Bhai, I, I'm handing the mic over to you. But before that, I, I'm, I'm keen to introduce Bikesh Bhai also. He is a renowned writer, editor, and lover, promoter of Gujarati language and literature. Bachelor of Commerce from Saurashtra in, in, University, Bachelor of Library Science from MS, MSU, and earns prof professional certificate in advertising, ma marketing management, mass, mass media, and journalism. He has been working with Ganpat University as a media and PR consultant and has worked as librarian and publisher with Ahmedabad Calico Museum, Gujarati Sahitya Parishad, and many more. Uh, Mr. Bhatt uh, worked as an editor for more than 25 years with leading newspapers in Gujarat and uh, he plays a key role in, he has played a key role in uh, launching Mumbai edition of Gujarat Samachar also. May I request Bikesh Bhai to please hand, take over because he has done a lot in this theme and uh, to, uh, to address us on the theme, please. Thank you, Bikesh Bhai, over to you. Thank you, sir. Adhraniya Manchastha Mahanubhav Ane Aapso Saunamara Namaskar Dr. Vikram Sarabhai एक युग प्रवर्तक वैज्ञानिक आजे आपने एमना 104 मा जन्म दिने एमनी स्मरण वंदना करवा भेगा था आचे अने एमनी स्थापेली संस्था अमदाद मैनेजमेंट एसोसेशन जिया स्थीत छे एवा एना भवन निर्मान नी 25 वर्ष नी उजवनी ने पन आपने साथे सांकरी छे अमता � चंद्रयान त्राण धरती पर से उड़ी ने चंद्र तरफ गति करतु थयो ते क्षणसीज अपने सौ हूं अने तमेज नहीं आखो देश आखो जगत विक्रम भाई ने स्मरी रयो छे एमने आदरेला अभियान नुज आ एक परिणाम छे अने एटले 
ચંદ્રયાન ત્રણમાંથી સાવ છેલ્લે છૂટો પડીને જે ભાગ ચંદ્ર ઉપર ઉતરશે તેનું નામ હું ભૂલતો ન હોઉં તો વિક્રમ પાડવામાં આવ્યો છે આમ પણ વિક્રમભાઈના જન્મ પછી જેમણે પણ એમનું નામ વિક્રમ પાડ્યું હશે એમને ખબર નહીં હોય કે એમને નામે કેટલા બધા વિક્રમો થવાના છે હા કવિવર ટાગોરે એમના ભવ્ય કપાળને નિરખીને આ બાળક ભારે તેજસ્વી બનશે એવી આગાહી જરૂર કરી હતી માત્ર અઠ્યાવીસ જ વર્ષની વયે એમણે અમદાવાદમાં ફિઝિકલ રિસર્ચ લેબોરેટરી પીઆરએલની સ્થાપના કરી હતી અને પછી તો એમણે એક પછી એક અનેક શિખરો સર કરવા માંડ્યા વિક્રમભાઈનો મહિમા કરવા અનેક ગ્રંથો પણ ઓછા પડે આજના આપણા સન્માનનીય અને વિદ્વાન વક્તાઓ વંદની શ્રી વિક્રમભાઈના જીવન અને કાર્યો વિશે વિગતે વાત કરવાના છે એટલે હું એ વિશે વધારે કંઈ કહેતો નથી છેલ્લા એકાદ વર્ષથી હું એમએના જ એક સૈનિક તરીકે કેટલાક ઇનોવેટિવ અને સાંસ્કૃતિક કાર્યક્રમોનું આયોજન મારી અસ્મિતા ગુર્જરી સંસ્થા દ્વારા કરી રહ્યો છું એકાદ મહિના પહેલાં હું અને એમએના એક્ઝિક્યુટિવ ડિરેક્ટર ભાઈ શ્રી ઉન્મેષ દીક્ષિત અમદાવાદ શહેર વિશેના કાર્યક્રમોની શ્રેણી કરવાનું વિચારી રહ્યા હતા સ્વાભાવિક રીતે જ અમદાવાદની ઓળખ સમી સંસ્થાઓ આઈઆઈએમ એમએ અટીરા વિક્રમ સારાભાઈ કોમ્યુનિટી સાયન્સ સેન્ટર અને ઈસરો જેવી સંસ્થાના સ્થાપક અને સર્જક વિક્રમભાઈનું સ્મરણ સૌથી પહેલું થયું અને બારમી ઓગસ્ટ એટલે કે આજનો દિવસ વિક્રમભાઈનો જન્મદિવસ આવતો જ હતો અને અમે આ કાર્યક્રમનો વિચાર કર્યો આવો આપણે અમદાવાદની ભૂમિના આ મહામાનવની ફરી ફરી વંદના કરીએ આદરણી મહેમાનો અને આપ સૌ આ વંદના યજ્ઞમાં જોડાયા એ માટે અસ્મિતા ગુર્જરી વતી પણ હું આપ સૌના માટે ખૂબ ખૂબ આદર અને આભારની લાગણી વ્યક્ત કરું છું ખાસ કરીને રાડિયા સાહેબ અને સમગ્ર એએમએ ટીમનો ખૂબ આભાર સાયન્સ એકેડેમી પણ આમાં જોડાય છે એ માટે સાયન્સ એકેડેમીનો પણ ખૂબ ખૂબ આભાર વંદન will now move on to the speakers whom we are all very eager to listen to joshi sahib may i request you the uh, do you do we do we want uh, to you can address from where you are also how, however you comfortable sir First of all, <clears throat> I'm very thankful to Amdavad Management Association and Dr. Vikram Sarabhai Memorial Trust for inviting me to participate and to share my views on the legacy of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai on the subject Vikram Bhai is a human being. Since there is a very sh short of time I will not go to the total work of Vikram Sarabhai, but especially I will narrate certain experiences of people who had the experience of Vikram Bhai in terms of how he helped them and supported them in various activities. As we all know that in 1947, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai returned from Cambridge after doing his PhD in cosmic rays and when he returned, he started his three careers simultaneously as a, as a visionary scientist, as an institution builder and as an industrialist. After doing all these things, as we also know that he started his career in 1947 and unfortunately the end came just after 24 years, in 1971. So Vikrambhai's contribution in doing so many works in terms of 
institution building, in scientific research, and starting various programs. Everything happened in only 24 years. So during that period, he guided about 25 students who did their PhDs, and he was a director PRL. He also worked as director Atira, director IIM, then chairman Atomic Energy Commission, chairman ISRO, and was a visit, senior visiting scientist at MIT. All these things happened during these 24 years. Now, I would like to mention during my thesis writing, when I met so many people, so many of his students, his colleagues, his friends, his family members, everybody, and tried to understand this Mahamanav, that how he could achieve so many things in such a short period. So now I would like to share few of the experiences of people. One of the major institution building project which Vikrambhai started was the starting of Indian Space Research Organization. The whole thing started in 1962 with a new organization which was set up by the government of India under the Department of Atomic Energy, which was known as Indian National Committee for Space Research under the chairmanship of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. During this new project, the first thing that he started was a physics, space physics seminar at PRL at Ahmedabad, which was inaugurated by Dr. Homi Bhabha. And he mentioned that we must start space program. If we don't start now, then it will be difficult for us that we will have to rely on other countries and it will be very expensive. So he started the INCOS PAR and with that the whole program started. The first thing he did it was that it was necessary that before you start the space program, you must have a sounding rocket launching station and it has to be near equator. So it was very near to Trivandrum where he started the Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station. The space was identified by one of his senior scientist colleagues Professor Chitney and Pramod Kale. He was, they were asked to identify locations for the Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station. They, find, they found four places and then they requested Homi Baba and Vikram Sarabhai to select out of these four, one of them. And those people went there and they selected Thumba as the station. Now there were so many Hundreds of fishermen were there. There was a church, there was a bishop house, there was a school and the settlements of all the people. And when government of Kerala was asked to hand over the place, those people were very much angry and they, were, they started doing some demonstration against them asked to vacate this place. So Vikrambhai told them that now government, the Kerala government, please, now you don't worry about that thing, leave it to me. So he went to meet the bishop of the church. He spoke to him that this is the case. So the bishop told him that please you come tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday and all the people will be there in the Sunday mass. And then we'll finalize this thing. He said, okay. Now on what I'm trying to narrate, it is a very interesting thing which Dr. Abdul Kalam has mentioned to me. It was the year 1962, and Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was looking for a site to establish a space station. He visited a number of places, Thumba in Kerala in southern India, was selected as it is near the equatorial region, and is ideally suited for ionospheric research in the upper atmosphere, apart from the study of the atmospheric structure. When Dr. Sarabhai visited Thumba, the locality had a number of villages and thousands of fishing folk were living in that area. It also had a beautiful ancient church. The St. Mary Magdalene Church and the bishop who was house was also nearby. Dr. Sarabhai met many politicians and bureaucrats 
in order to get the place for building research facilities, but it was difficult to obtain permissions. Finally, he was asked to see the Bishop of Trivandrum, Reverend Father Dr. Peter Bernard Pereira. It was a Saturday when Dr. Sarabhai met the Bishop. The Bishop smiled and asked him to meet him the next day, Sunday. That day after service at the church, the Bishop told the congregation, my children, I have a famous scientist with me who wants our church and the place I live for the work of space science research. Dear children, science seeks truth by reasoning. In one way, science and spiritualism seek the same divine blessings for doing good. My children, can we give God's abode for a scientific mission? The church reverberated with a chorus of Amen from the congregation. Subsequently, Reverend Peter Bernard Pereira took the noble decision to dedicate the church building to India's national goal to establish the ISRO. When I think of this event, I can see how enlightened spiritual and scientific leaders work harmoniously for larger goals. This is how what Dr. Kalam thought about it. The second experience, which is a very, very interesting thing, Dr. Sarabha had invited one accountant from Bangalore Space Station for a discussion. The man came and he was asked to see Dr. Sarabha at 3 o'clock at PRL. When he came, as usual, Dr. Sarabha asked him, how are you and how is your family? So it took little time for him to answer. And Dr. Sarabha immediately asked, yes, tell me, what is the problem? He said, sir, there is no problem, but when I was to come here, my father was not feeling well. So I had little worry about him. He said, okay, I will call you after five minutes. He called his secretary, please book his return ticket to Bangalore. Tell him to come after his father is well. All the scientists, as well as the accountant himself, told the sir, I'm ready and we can discuss the thing. He said, no, but I don't want to discuss. You go back. I will call you later. The man went. Now you can imagine, at that time, what this man would have thought about the person. Once Dr. Sarabhai was to go to Delhi and directly Usually used to go to Bombay by Gujarat Mail because the train used to leave at 10 o'clock and used to reach there at about 6 o'clock in the morning. But on that he was to go to Delhi. So from PRL directly he was to go to airport. So the moment he entered the car, he asked the driver. Usually it doesn't happen, but he asked the driver, how are you and how is your family as usual? So the driver said, no, sir, we are all fine. But we had a little problem. He said, what is it? He said, the government of India has announced the arrears of the salary. So we thought that before Diwali, if we get the arrears, then we'll be able to spend for our family. So he said, then what happened? He said, sir, accountant said that still the governing council has not approved it. And after Diwali only, we can distribute. So we can buy said, okay, you take a car to PRL again. So they came back to PRL. He told driver, ask accountant to meet me. Accountant came. We can buy said, when are you going to distribute the areas? He said, sir, immediately after Diwali, because it has to be approved by the governing council. He said, you don't worry about the governing council thing. You see that the money is a, distributed by today evening before they leave. He said, but sir, we don't have that much money, cash money with us. He said, give me a piece of paper. And he wrote a note, told him, go to Calico, get the cash, and see that before five, it should be distributed. <laughs> Just think about it, how many such experience have you heard or experienced? Number of places 
such things happen, but there is no solution. Only he could do it because he always respected his staff. He knew that everything is happening only because of these people with him. The last one, I had, I think, taken much time. The last one, very interesting one. When he was, after war started, he had to return to Cambridge again, from Cambridge. And he started working under Professor C. V. Raman at the Indian Institute of Science. And he was studying there. Whenever he used to go to meet Professor Raman, at that time, outside Raman's room, there is an old peon used to sit. And every time, Vikram Bhai used to say hello. And that man used to like it so much that there is somebody who really respect me. Every time this thing used to happen. After that, when the war was over, Vikram Bhai went back to Cambridge. After getting his PhD, he returned in 1947. And he came to meet Professor Ravan for his blessings. When he came, that man was also sitting. So after meeting Raman, he came out and asked that man, how are you? He said, sir, I am going to also get retired, but I'm in a very, very bad financial condition also because of a very small income and economic condition. So he said, what is your son doing? He said, sir, nothing is, he tried so much to get us good job, but that he also did not get. He said, give me your address. Huh? I will call you back. Then he came back to Ahmedabad. After a few months, he sent a letter to him that send your son to Ahmedabad. That man named Kadar Bhai. Kadar came to Ahmedabad. He was asked to start bookbinding work. And he started that thing. That man became a, such a great person for bookbinding that all the institutions all the libraries started giving him, and they found his work so important and so nice. And finally, he got it very good. So I met him, I called him on All India Radio, and asked him to narrate the story. And with tears in his eyes, that man told the story that whatever I am today, it is because of him. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Amazing stories, and I know many more to come. Pankaj Bhai, if you can, I can invite you, uh, Professor Gajar. Uh, Uh, good evening to all, uh, uh, dear dignitaries on the dais, of the dais. Uh, this is uh, really a wonderful opportunity for me to share some of the collected things over here regarding the Vikram Sarabhai's contributions in the field of education. Uh, see, usually as a teacher, uh, when we used to give a popular talk for the science popularization, Okay, I used to ask only one question, give the name of 10 Indian scientists. And uh, unfortunately, okay, uh, during the last year, I asked this question uh, in 14 lectures and around 3,000 audience yeah, of uh, higher education institute students and the faculties. Unfortunately, uh, we are unable to get the answer of 10 Indian scientists' name. Yeah, but of course, yeah, uh, with a pride, I will say that majority of them, yeah, able to say four to five names. One of them is Abdul Kalam, second, Vikram Sarabhai, third, C.V. Raman, fourth, J.C. Bose, and the fifth one, the Homi Baba. 
Okay, this is the statistical analysis based on the more than 300 uh, options, okay, the answers I have collected. So, again, see, out of uh, more than this, okay, uh, and this question I have asked since, okay, all over the India, while revealing the popular uh, talks on the uh, contribution of the Indian scientists, uh, usually, okay, in the Gujarat, I used to deliver in the Gujarati, otherwise, uh, English or Hindi. Yeah. So, again, yeah, the out of five names, yeah, uh, everybody has say, suggested the name of Vikram Sarabhai uh, as a second name. Yeah, that is the first is the Abdul Kalam. The reason is that, okay, he is the, just uh, the uh, near past. Yeah, while the yeah, Vikram Sarabhai, okay, we do not have the live contact with the uh, Vikram Sarabhai. And hence, then also the second name uh, in the ranking is the Vikram Sarabhai. That is the contribution you can say. That is, if we ask the students or the audience, that is name as Indian scientist, not the foreign scientist, okay, the Indian scientist, then definitely the Vikram Sarabhai will be there. Yeah. So let us begin with the uh, Vikram Sarabhai as a science educator. Yeah, this is okay. Whatever the content I am showing over here is okay. Compiled from the electronics, uh, okay, the materials available, uh, the photographs, and other part. Uh, this is not my own. Uh, you can say uh, the write-up over here. Yeah, uh, Dr. Vikram Sahabai used to believe that the contemporary problems of the society can be solved. Yeah, if we apply the science and technology properly if we apply the science and technology properly. And hence, he used to as, uh, inspire the young minds, that is, use the science and technology, use the science and technology for the development of the, uh, our own motherland, our own motherland, yeah? That was the concept. And as rightly pointed out, that is whatever the contributions we are looking over uh, uh, here, okay, or whatever we are speaking over here, is just the contribution in last, uh, means the 24 years of span of Vikram Sarabhai. Yeah, that is 24 means only, uh, okay, you can say uh, less than 25 years contribution. He opened the doors of the scientific research in many fields in India. Yeah, and uh, the few in the list that is starting from the cosmic rays, magnetic equators, ionospheres, uh, aeronomy, uh, interplanetary space and solar activities, astronomy and astrophysics. Atmospheric science and aero, aeronomy, earth sciences, solar systems, theoretical physics, and whatnot. See, the science during those days, yeah, is uh, believed to be a costly affair. Uh, means 1947 to you can say 1970, uh, and sometimes uh, it is not the job of everybody. But Vikram Bai believe that if we create a scientific temper. Okay, in the young minds, if you educate the people, okay, with our own tra trained uh, uh, people, then we can achieve the goals in the society, goals in the society. Yeah. In 62, in 1962, he sent a few young engineers to NASA, okay, to get, okay, acquainted with the space technologies and uh, which we can utilize uh, over here uh, in India. Yeah. He was believing in the networking systems, that is, uh, we can uh, have a network system with the global uh, uh, scientists and other communities. Not only this, he used to believe that, okay, the science to be percolated, okay, to the younger minds and in the society, and hence he has, okay, created one uh, group of improvement of science education, okay, through the PRL. And uh, now it is known as, okay, the Community Science Center, okay, one of the most, you can say, the prestigious uh, community science center among the science center network of India, among the science center network of India. Uh, and the, some of the parents may be knowing that to get the admission in one of the courses of any of the courses of the Vikram Sanabai Science Community Center is not an easy job. That is uh, too much attraction in the uh, students and the, uh, you can say, the, uh, that is the uh, parents over, uh, uh, across the Ahmedabad. Yeah. Dr. Vikram Sanabai also thought of uh, collaborating the nuclear science uh, skill into the agriculture science, into the agriculture science. And hence, okay, because of uh, uh, the Vikram Sarabhai's efforts, okay, a joint venture uh, lead, 
uh, with the collaborations with the DAE lab and the ICAR, that is the Institute of uh, uh, Agriculture uh, Research, uh, Agriculture Research. Uh, in this way, yeah, that is, uh, he has uh, educated us, okay, that is, the, uh, even the nuclear scientists can help us in our agriculture uh, uh, field, agricultural field. He was believing us to use of communication in science education, yeah, and uh, probably here one of the phases who, whom I know, the Malti Ben and the <laughs> Mewada Bhai, and probably, okay, the people like me are also knowing in the use of the telecommunication in educating the farmers and the uh, other part, that is the PG station, yeah. Uh, of course, the PG is uh, later on, but uh, um, the concept laid down by the Vikram Sarabhai, that is how a scientist can help in educating the people through the communication system, through the communication system. And that was the uh, idea of the Vikram Sarabhai, uh, we can uh, use the communication system to percolate the science to the society, science to the society. Yeah. Uh, the first, okay, that is the use of uh, telecommunication system for uh, this kind of uh, uh, awareness is used by a T6 uh, US satellites and uh, uh, there were uh, six states uh, covered in this particular network and 2500 villages were covered to broadcast uh, the programs on the agriculture aspects, agriculture aspects, yeah. Science and technology in business also, okay. As such, uh, the Vikram Sarabhai has a legacy of, uh, you can say, the um, uh, business industries also, uh, and hence, he has used, that is the science in the betterment of the business and the other parts. So he has shown that is the science can be used uh, in, uh, in the business uh, policies and the, uh, his planning. Uh, he has used, uh, he has calculated and shown some graphs uh, for the production and the cost cutting and the cost estimation of the uh, oils and other part. And that was the first, you can say, study, a systematic research methodology based study uh, for the operational research, operational research. Atira, we all know, Atira, we all know, yeah. Uh, that is again, uh, he was believing that even in any kind of industry, if we, we use the science and the technology, scientific tools and the science, uh, research methodology, then we can uh, progress uh, uh, in that particular industry. Of course, that era was, uh, you can say uh, established with the multidisciplinary concepts and the interdisciplinary concept, okay, and uh, with the division in the physics, chemistry, statistics, psychology, uh, and uh, the library science uh, kind of things also. Yeah. Uh, so that was the reason that is, uh, if you want to progress, then uh, even scientists can educate that if you do uh, any activity with the scientific temperament, then we can achieve our goal with a ease, with a ease. Yeah. Vikram Sarabhai used to travel, okay, once a week to visit his own uh, uh, pharmaceutical company at Baroda every week, every week. Yeah. And uh, at that time, uh, the road network was not good enough. So he used, uh, he used to travel by a train, by a train. And to, for that particular part, okay, uh, he always accompanied by few research scholars with uh, him and they used to discuss uh, the research problems and other part during the uh, traveling time, during the traveling time. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> then again, low cost power agriculture, because the, at that time the food crunch and the our agriculture industry uh, required certain kind of, uh, you can say, uh, the influence of the science and technology. So he, he has introduced a concept of the low cost power agriculture uh, into uh, India, into India. The most famous thing, okay, that is the word coined by the Vikram Sarabhai is leapfrog. Yeah, leapfrog was the uh, term, okay, usually he used to speak, okay, in many of the deliberation, many of the deliberation, and the leapfrogging, which uh, uh, in all its sense means India could <coughs> uh, tackle anything, build anything, solve anything through the technology and science, he used to believe in this particular concept, he used to believe in this particular concept, yeah. 
వీను ది విక్రమ్ సారాభాయ్ డాక్టర్ విక్రమ్ సారాభాయ్ ఈజ్ నోన్ ఫో యాజ్ ద ఇన్స్టిట్యూషనల్ బిల్డర్ అండ్ ద స్పేస్ సైంటిస్ట్ యా హీ హెస్ ఎడ్యుకేటెడ్ అస్ ఓకే హీ హెస్ మెంటర్ ది వేరియస్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్స్ లైక్ పిఆర్ఎల్ కమ్యూనిటీ సైన్స్ సెంటర్ ఆపరేషనల్ రీసెర్చ్ గ్రూప్ నెహ్రూ ఫౌండేషన్ ఇండియన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అహ్మదాబాద్ అటీరా ఫాస్ట్ బిడర్ టేస్ట్ టేస్ట్ రియాక్టర్ వేరియబుల్ ఎనర్జీ సైక్లోట్రాన్ ప్రాజెక్ట్స్ ఎలక్ట్రానిక్స్ కార్పొరేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా లిమిటెడ్ యురేనియం కార్పొరేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా లిమిటెడ్ స్పేస్ రీసెర్చ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ అండ్ వాట్ నాట్ సో హీ హెస్ నాట్ ఎడ్యుకేటెడ్ he has mentored all the uh, all the institutions and the scientists working in in these institutions and the scientists now okay mentoring us and mentoring india yeah he also believe that the global network is essential yeah that is you cannot alone go ahead yeah and hence he has tried to develop the repo with the international communities in science and uh, abroad yeah Uh, so these are the few pictures that is uh, i have taken from the reso- electronic resources yeah, that is how the vikram sarabhai uh, has gathered the global at- uh, attention uh, and maintain the global network uh, uh, for the science community for the science community in general not only this we also know the political willingness is also essential for the science uh, communication science implementation and even in the institutional building and hence uh, he was uh, okay successful in okay um, convincing the political leaders bureaucrats to get okay the funds and the other policies as required for the science education and all in india yeah. so within this 10 to 15 minutes i want to speak only this because the other speakers are also over here um, Uh, at the end in the last two slides i will say that we are lucky that such a unique scientist engineer businessman a genius with a personality full of qualities was born in our country who made an unparalleled contribution to our scientific world to our scientific world yeah. it is our immense pleasure that he has developed and nurture organizations in multiple domains to take our country to a high level in the field of science in the field of science yeah this was the photograph okay the joshi saab used to tell that uh, the tagore uh, ravindra tagore has uh, okay commented that he will uh, okay flourish in the future yeah uh, which i got from the literature it is known that as it is often said that some uh, some are born with a silver spoon yeah and uh, for vikram bai also uh, in some of the literature it is mentioned that the vikram bai was born with a si- silver spoon but not many of them utilizes those golden moments which comes as appro- uh, opportunities through their as- uh, uh, strength of the best of their abilities but vikram bai okay did it yeah whatever the opportunities he had he did it so with this i thanks okay the ama gujarat science academy and the co-sponsor of the science temper program over here uh, to give me uh, an opportunity to speak for 10 to 15 minutes on the vikram sarabhai's contributions in the science education okay he has educated us okay that is how a person influence the education and the science in general thank you thank you professor gajjar very very interesting you know and and certainly feeling us uh, feeling so much proud that you know we are so lucky to have had uh, dr vikram sarabhai uh, we have the distinguished uh, scientist now uh, uh, who will be presenting his uh, views uh, dr nilesh desai may i request you to please uh, go ahead good evening everybody manch par asin mahanubhav ane anya upasthit bija mahanubhav ane all participants let me thank the organizers for calling me here for this very important event celebrating 104th birth anniversary of dr vikram sarabhai and it is not only our duty but it is a tribute to dr sarabhai 
by celebrating this and we in isro we celebrate it as a national remote sensing day also any of you may not be aware that today morning we had a very big program in karamsat through our indian society of remote sensing where we organize similar lecture for the benefit of students especially so that as sir was mentioning not many people are able to count the name of scientists at least now we may have some few more scientists by organizing such outreach activities so my task is to take you through this journey of being a legendary space scientist dr vikram sarabhai's legacy as a space scientist so i'll take through that please stop me whenever you feel bored because i am notorious for exceeding my times <laughs> and uh, by now you would have known that i am least qualified to speak on dr sarabhai except for being an engineer in isro that is my only qualification the very great institution set up by him so that is my only qualification is i'll say to speak on dr sarabhai i have never seen dr sarabhai working in isro because i joined in 86 and uh, in his short career of 24 years sir has uh, done wonders all of you know that he died very early at the age of 52 but what is left behind i will try to elaborate that as a space scientist what he envisioned the vision and how we are today so something on what what vision he gave and what is now there in isro so some idea about isro today of course you know through newspapers tvs and all that but uh, first an information will give you a better idea that is the with that motive i have come here that is one aspect of course i will take you through some journey already speakers earlier I have given you a good glimpse about that and uh, what legacy is left behind in isro that i'll try to highlight some of those aspects so let me start my presentation so let us see this journey of uh, indian space research organization as envisioned by dr vikram sarabhai as his role as a space scientist of course he was a great educator he was an institution builder and all his human qualities all of other people are better qualified to tell about that and they have told some of the aspect and in the end we'll be hearing dr kartike so he is the right person to tell about further on those aspect i will cover this how we started his activities in prl today now isro headquarter or isro is there and how space applications everybody knows nasa i think most of the people here know nasa most of them also know about isro nowadays but very few people know about even those living in ahmedabad when i was studying in engineering college i also hardly knew about space application center which is the center of isro in ahmedabad but still people don't know about it antrik supyog kendra so i will try to highlight few aspect related to that also academic and professional journey of dr sara bai as a first as a student student of science then as a graduate or undergraduate and then doctoral studies all of you know that so i don't have to tell much about that but the time distribution of cosmic rays the subject he chose as a part of his research and before that completing his intermediate in gujarat college then going to st john's college in cambridge coming back during that world war in 1940 then working under dr c v raman uh, Many people have told about that 40 to 45 in ISC. ISC is considered to be India's best research and institute in science and technology. And working under Dr. C. V. Raman, it was a great privilege for him. Then he went back for his PhD, doctoral studies again back to Cambridge under Professor E. S. Sire, and he did some practical work in Phyllis under Phyllis Nicholson in another laboratory. and then after coming back in 47 he established pr physical research laboratory and that was the headquarter of isro those days unfortunately as all of you know he died early and then indira gandhi was searching for a worthy successor and she zeroed down on professor satish dhawan satish dhawan had just returned from usa then and took over as director of indian institute of science he said i am ready to take up isro after sara bai and it was a big legacy of sara bai because handling space program those days and what sara bai envisioned was a very onerous task 
Dhawan was ready, but he put a condition that I don't want to leave Bangalore or IISC. So that way, then Indira Gandhi decided to shift headquarter to Bangalore. So that's, that's how our headquarter is in Bangalore. And you would have noticed that ISRO headquarter and Indian Institute of Science are just opposite to each other because <laughs> Dr. Dhawan used to handle both the institutions and then he handled it for almost 13 years after that. The rest is history. But meanwhile, while doing his doctoral research under, first under C.V. Raman here at IIC, Dr. Sarabhai chose this subject, Time Distribution of Cosmic Rays. Dr. Gajar also told you about that. And then under that, the specific study he made for the tropical latitudes, this observation related to the effect of cosmic rays. So that was his basic research, which he presented and got the doctorate and then came back to India with the setting up PRL. And this is a rare picture you are seeing of few of the great scientists, which uh, Sir mentioned, uh, Santi Sarov Bhatnagar, Homi Baba, C.V. Raman with Dr. Sarabhai. The, these four are the great luminaries as far as Indian science is concerned. And this is a rare where they all assembled at IISC, I think, and uh, were discussing some topics. Rest, setting up of initial research days under Indian Space Research Organization. All of you know, he set up PRL, but PRL was not there. There was nothing. So he started his work from his house itself in retreat. Then he took uh, on hire some few labs in MG Science College before that. And then meanwhile, parallelly, the founding stone of PRL was set up. Professor C.V. Raman came here to lay the foundation of PRL. It took almost seven years to build PRL, and 1954 only it was ready. By that time, uh, till then, for seven years, he worked from MG Science College. So most of you are aware of that. He had two laboratories in MG Science, and he worked relentlessly doing that. And when, during the inauguration of PRL, Dr. Jawaharlal Nehru came here to inaugurate that. And Nehru, all of you know that. He was also a visionary who gave vision of India's science and technology program. So in that sense, all these luminaries, Ram C. V. Raman, Nehru, Dr. Sarabhai, they were associated with physical research laboratory and the inception of ISRO. And that's how PRL, all of you know, is a very important laboratory. Now it is as an autonomous organization under Department of Space, although it is not directly part of ISRO, but it is working in association with ISRO, basically involved in various science-related and academic activities. And uh, initially, Ahmedabad Education Society and Kamakshan Education Foundation, Government of Gujarat, Department of Space, all of them helped it. And now it is an autonomous organization, as I mentioned, under Department of Space. And it is a very important role to play in India space program. And because of the legacy left behind by Dr. Sarabhai. Then ISRO's activity started. He selected Thumba as the right place. Apart from PRL Ahmedabad, Thumba was the other place where things were happening related to initial activities related to rocket launching. Dr. Abdul Kalam and his team and many people, many veterans were there working with Dr. Sarabhai. The main aim of Sarabhai was when he started this Thumba re rocket related activity was to identify a, a good launching site. So initially Thumba was selected. Of course, afterwards we got shifted to Sriharikota. We now launch only sounding rockets from Thumba. Sar, Sriharikota. Uh, it is named after Satish Dhawan now, SDSC Satish uh, Space Center. Sri Harikota is considered to be world's second most ideal site for launching. First is Kuru in French Guiana. It is the most ideal place to launch. So because with minimum effort and minimum fuel spending, you can launch different types of satellite. And so in similar way, Shar is the second most ideal site as far as launching of satellite is concerned. So this is how our activity related to rocket technology started and many veterans contributed to that. Dr. Abdul Kalam has been one of them. And we had a lot of collaboration initially sounding rocket so that networking part which Dr. Gajjar mentioned 
because it was due to the efforts of Dr. Sarabhai only, we could graduate into a space-faring nation. So these were our first rockets. All of you have seen these pictures, rocket parts being carried on bicycle and all that. And today we have three different major categories of launch vehicles, PSLV, GSLV, and recently we have introduced SSLV, small satellite launch vehicle. And after that, rest is history in COSPAR, uh, Padmanabh Joshi sir mentioned about that Indian National Committee for Space Research, followed by Ahmedabad Earth Station, we have seen in our main campus in Space Application Center. It is this big antenna, 14 meter diameter. Sarabhai gave contract to then Nippon Electric Company Japan. Now it is known as NEC Japan, its brand name. So Jap NEC built this first antenna, or the first Earth Station of India in Ahmedabad here. All this area was a total forest area, jungle, up to Bhopal. And in that place, only that one building was there. And afterwards, ISRO was set up as a consequence. This National Committee for Space Research, which was headed by Dr. Sarabhai. And you can see the names of the luminaries there, Professor Chitneys, Professor Meena, Pisharoti, all veterans. So sir was accessed for 10 names. Here itself, you, have, you can count 15 names. Various awards, all of you know, he was the Jewel of India's Science and Technology, Santi Swarup Bhatnagar Award. That was the first award. He got big one, 62, Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan posthumously in 72 after his death. Of course, any award is less for the person like Dr. Sarabhai. He was, has many credits to his name. I will not name any of each of them, but uh, all of you know about that. He was a member of various scientific and technological society and uh, visiting professor at many international and national forums. So his legacy is well known. And within a short span, he could do this much. So you can imagine if you would have got a bigger life, what you could have managed. So this was one man with many shares. So he was not only a science and technology man, he was something different. As all of you know, he was a multifaceted personality, a very good human being, educator, and many other things, institution builders. All these pictures show the legacy, the great efforts he did. Been. And now coming to ISRO, this was his vision that we want to use space research and technology for the benefit of common man and society. So with that motto, he started ISRO, harnessing space technology for national development and uh, Sir mentioned about that church and all that thing, how he acquired that land for our rocket research. And then here, various set infrastructure was set up in Ahmedabad and followed by in Bangalore and many places. And then we did this initial experiment. His motto was that if you, we wanted to build satellite, rocket launchers, everything. But his, his point was that first, if you want to build something, first learn how to use that. So with that idea, we hired American satellite ATS-6 to do this site experiment. And as was mentioned that it was the world's biggest mass mobilization program in TV broadcast. So using American ATS-6 satellite, we broadcast the TV program in 2,500 remote villages of this country. You will say today, what is so great in a TV broadcast? Today, you, on your mobile, you can see a TV. What was great was 2,500 villages remotely spaced apart in the whole country like India in 75, 76. You can imagine even electricity was not there at most of the places. And that time we could manage this program. So thanks to ISRO community, of course, Sarabhai died, but his legacy was taken forward by Professor Yashpal and his team. And that's how this site experiment was considered to be one of the biggest success in India's space program at the initial stage followed by STEP, which was a telecommunication experiment project where we used satellite, a German, Franco German satellite was hired called Symphony to do communication. Three satellites can do communication all over the world. So following the principle of Dr. Arthur Clark, we could test communication from one place to another using a satellite. So that was how communication started, followed by Professor Pisaroti and his team worked on that disease in coconut and using remote sensing to find out that. So that was foray into the remote sensing part. So that's why ISRO started all this activity. I mentioned about site and steps. I'll not elaborate further. So 
86 franco german satellite professor yaspal was the main leader for this program and it was a big success as i mentioned and this gave the confidence to indian scientists to that we we can also do space research and use technology for space research and that's how it is considered to be india space program of course now that is getting changed now over a period new space policy has come but everything under a single umbrella one umbrella that is the hallmark of india space program we do rocket launching also we do as i mentioned communication remote sensing now navigation is also added like gps space science exploration planetary research chandrayaan is going to go there now then launch vehicles and everything so whatever you can think of and finally application and uses of satellite technology so that is also part of our program so it is one of the most unique program in the whole world in nowhere at one place you have everything of course now as i mentioned professor satish dhawan took over after sarabhai left and uh, guided the india space program of course abdul kalam didn't become isro chairman but he was there for 20 22 years in isro then moved on to drdo atomic energy then became advisor to prime minister then moved on as a president of this country so that shows his remarkable capabilities not only as a technologist but as a great motivator in science and technology of course professor yashpal as i said took forward he was the first director of indian our space application center he was scientist at tifr and he was brought here in 72 and we just completed 50 years of our existence in 2022 december we want to celebrate in a big way this year i will invite various ideas from all those people present here and here you see a rare picture of dr kalam with dr sarabhai discussing something at thumba so these were the stalwarts who gave this thing under prof dr vikram sarabhai leadership so a leader can generate so many followers who are of equal capabilities so that that was the biggest capability of dr sarabhai of course now isro works directly under department of space which is directly under prime minister because we want fast approvals of all our programs projects otherwise bureaucracy will derail everything all of you know that so to avoid that now in space has been set up that is the change this government is bringing about because we want more private sector participation then encourage startups and more academic interface to be enhanced so all these thing put together in space has been formed last year honorable prime minister was here to inaugurate it and unfortunately what we lost as headquarter of isro from andabad due to sarabhai's death we are trying to regain slightly something with the headquarter of in space being set up here in andabad in one of our campuses other places if you see all the places where isro has been set up thanks to vision of dr sarabhai each place has its own ambience you can see of course sec is different and is it is i always feel that sec is better than all the other centers of isro i will tell you why but each place because each of the center work on a specific area of work like trivandrum people work on only on rocket science or rocket technology in bangalore they work on your know, satellite technology while well, here we work on many things i'll come to that but each place has its own ambience we have two centers in trivandrum two in bangalore and then one in hyderabad dehradun so many places in all each one is worth visiting sri hari kota our launching site now it is open to everybody you can register on a website and go to see a launch also of course at your own money we don't provide <laughs> now isro is thanks to sarabhai's vision see isro is there everywhere so you need not come to isro isro will come to you that is what i tell various academic institution because there is something or the other in different parts of the country with which you can collaborate or do research in association with isro so as you can see isro has grown and lot of infrastructure is set up at different places this is our scorecard so what sarabhai gave the vision we have tried to live up to that almost we are successful to that extent it looks very promising and satisfactory but we have our share of failures also as i said murphy's law and here we have to be first time right we cannot afford any deficiency if there is something some bug remains we will land up in problem that what happened during the last chandrayaan 
landing on moon similarly our last rocket launch of sslv first time we were making small satellite launch vehicle it is just a stripped down version of our pslb rocket only th three rocket stage uh, solid stage stages we were very sure it will work last august we launched launched it because it is just a stripped down version of pslv which can carry a small satellite because now we expect the small satellite market is going to grow worldwide but it didn't work satellite uh, launcher worked perfectly but it didn't put satellite into the right orbit so satellite finally came back to earth and, and got uh, lost into the ocean so that was the if you miss out something you will fail even if a proven technology also so it has to be first time right any defect anywhere so it has to be a zero defect system first time right so all these are the requirements of a space business space is a risky business after all now we do everything almost technology application what sara by envisage that you want to do research for various society societal activities and for a common man that we are doing this is isro today 13000 crore budget per year my center here is 1000 crore there are 21 total centers so this money is spread across this. We, our strength is 17,000, almost constant since last 10 to 12 years. So we are only replenishing the retiring people. We are not inducting new people. Because now government wants that private sector should play an important role. As you can see, if you see the space market, we have only 2% share in the space market. Although we are one of the four big countries who are into the space business, we are ones among the few who have gone to moon or Mars or all these places, but still our share is only 2%. Government want at least it should become 5 or 10%, because that is a worth goal attempting. So to make it happen, private sector has to play a major role. So with that effort, only public sector units and this in-space was set up to facilitate. So now people are allowed to use our facility also, because all these facilities have been built up with public money. So government wants that you can hire that and use it for any of the activity which you want. So that's why NCL is a public sector company. Our commercial arm, earlier Antrix was there. It is now dying down because we entered into a lot of arbitration issues with Devas, that Isro Devas problem. All of you are aware of that. NCL is our New Space India Limited. It is our commercial arm. It is a public sector unit under Department of Space. In space, as I said, is a facilitator as well as a regulator, which will work like TRI as a regulator for various space activities. It has already started working, one year completed. And uh, this is how now we feel, or government feels that we can increase the share of private sector into that. Few things on space application center, I already told you about that 14 meter antenna. Today we don't use it, but we have kept it as a legacy, our heritage value. I mentioned about the only one building, this earth station in here in the main satellite campus, but today we have 50 buildings there. So you can imagine how much growth has happened in activities as well as technology. We have two more campuses in Bhopal, the seven kilometers away from our main campus. There is a Delhi earth station, which was set up after the Ahmedabad earth station. And it's, again, it's, it is a heritage component for us. Indira Gandhi used to go there and address the whole country those days late 70s and early 80s. Today, sitting on your home, on your, through your mobile, you can do video conferencing. But those days, if you want to address the whole country, Indira Gandhi has to go there. Prime Minister has to go to this place to address the country. We have a very good exhibition. Please do visit it. It is open on Saturday, Sunday also. Only Monday it is closed. In space has started working in our Bhopal campus. So anybody in private sector or academic institution, if they want to do something in related to space research or technology elements, they can come to that place and use our laboratories also. We have set up facilities there. So, and uh, as I mentioned, SAC, why it is unique or different? Because we do, see satellite is a vehicle. The one which does the actual work is the payload or sensor. And that payload is being developed at Ahmedabad Space Application Center. And the final end product use or the application or UPO, that also happens at Ahmedabad. So we work on the initial portion or the main brain or the heart of a satellite as well as the end product of the satellite. 
So when you see our composition, human resource itself, 2,000 people work here as a regular employee, 1,500 more as a contract employee, and we have people of all varieties and skills, a computer engineer or a mechanical hardware engineer or an electronics and communication engineer, and various scientists, different science domains, physics, chemistry, biology, everything. So we have people of all types and skills, even ITI is there, diploma holders, graduates, postgraduates, PhDs, all type of people are there, even social researchers are there. This is our progress, remote sensing now, we are almost world leader in various activities related to camera systems. So we have moved from one kilometer to 0.3, one feet, 0.3 meters. These are some of the few images, as you can see, this is India's capability now, 0.3 meter, one feet. When we started, we were imaging means one, this whole AMA campus will appear as one dot in an image. Today I can resolve a car going on a road, its number plate also we can see from a satellite. So that much result. Similarly, our radar program is evolved, we are the world leaders, we have equal capability as America or Russia as far as radar is concerned. Radar is also used for imaging. And this is one typical image from uh, our radar of Shanghai Airport, China. So you can see even an aircraft standing on a tarmac on the airport. Each, we can find out the make of the aircraft also, whether it is made by Boeing or by Airbus. So up to that level, information can be analyzed from a radar image. So not, not only America or China or Russia are spying on us, we are equally capable of similar surveillance. <laughs> To achieve all this, satellite will give you data. Im interpreting image, to generate image itself, it will need a lot of data processing steps. So that all also we are doing here in Ahmedabad and a lot of applications. And you can visit these two websites which we have, Vedas and Mosdeq, where you will get further information about the various applications. Similarly, we have a very good communication program. Also. I mentioned about remote sensing, similarly communication, disaster management system, so total India is covered under that. We have dedicated satellite for providing transponder for disaster management. So whenever any disaster happens, satellite will come into picture because your normal communication will stop. Of course, meteorology and weather forecast now, we have, so we can track the tri cyclone right from its beginning. So 10 days in advance, we'll know that cyclone is going to come. Nowadays, people don't bother about cyclone. Earlier, 5 lakh people died in uh, India and Bangladesh during a cyclone. Now today hardly, we don't, we just read it in newspaper and don't worry about that. So that is the effect of satellite technology. Navigation, GPS is dominant in your life, almost 95% of activity which you do, you don't know, but directly or indirectly, GPS is affecting your activities. So in government want that you should be governed by our own system instead of by American system like GPS. So we have developed this Navic system. Shortly you are going to hear a lot about that. Various governance application we have put, Satabdi and Radhani trains are all controlled by, with this, our navigation system as well as our communication system. So the movement of all trains is now being tracked automatically through satellite technology. Similarly, fishermen going into fishing, real-time aircraft tracking. So all these applications we are doing with this. And uh, as I said, NASA, everybody knows. Now NASA also knows ISRO is there. So NASA, ISRO, we are working last, 10 years on a joint project. It is going to be launched in January 2024. And you will hear a lot because the whole world is eagerly looking forward to a, this radar system. One part was built by JPL NASA. JPL is considered to be the world's biggest or the best laboratory in, in the world in aerospace. Similarly, SAC has built the other radar. So this two radar is getting integrated in Bangalore and it will be launched by our rocket from Sri Harikota. We have for astronomical study, we have set up this telescope at Hanley. So people who are interested in astronomy and astrophysics, they can utilize the signals we can capture from coming from far away stars and planets. And quantum technology, you are going to hear a lot about that. Your cyber frauds are happening nowadays, it is very common. So your OTP, instead of coming on your mobile, it will come through this technology, quantum technology. Nobody can uh, do the... Uh, hacking of that or they cannot steal it. So that is the beauty of this particular technology. Government has given almost 6,000 crore program for this quantum technology. SAC has taken a lead into that. 
So we uh, will now have a satellite based quantum communication also. So other data will move through normal terrestrial or fiber optics or wireless network, but only the OTP will come through this quantum technology. We have named a crater after Dr. Sarabhai, last Chandrayaan 2, we have a very high resolution terrain mapping camera and we found out a new crater which was named after Dr. Sarabhai and in a sense it looks ironical because I showed you one half portion also, the other half is this. Sarabhai said that we are not here to compete with advanced countries when we started our <coughs> space program to go to moon or Mars or put man in space. And today all of you will feel that we are exactly doing what Sarabhai said, don't do that. So we are going to moon, Mars, and everybody gets fascinated by that only. But it is not that because this is also the requirement of the time. Because nobody gives you the technology. Two minutes I'll take to just tell you briefly about how Chandrayaan is going to land on moon, 23rd August. He just celebrated 54 years of moon landing. I am strong when he went to, to moon on 20th July. By 24th July, he was back in um, USA. So many of you may be thinking, okay, why we are taking 45 days to go to moon? Because, because of the limitation of our rocket technology, we can take only 4,000 kg. While America and Russia have rockets which can take up larger payload. So they can go faster. We want to utilize our fuel in a very highly optimized way. So we do it in steps, I'll come to that. So we have done Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2, Chandrayaan 3. In Chandrayaan 1, various payloads were there. And we did a crash landing on Chandrayaan 1. What we did was from a, it was orbiting around moon, we threw a camera system from that satellite. So it took 22 minutes to land on moon. It is crash landed. This was the idea of Dr. Abdul Kalam. So we implemented it. And on that camera body, the flag of India was painted. So that way Indian flag is already there on moon. This was Chandrayaan 2. All of you know about that, so I will not repeat it. Vikram lander was the lander which was named after Dr. Sarabhai. There was a Pragyan rover inside lander. Of course, there was a last mile problem before two kilometers when it was landing. The orbiter is highly successful. It was supposed to last only for one year. It was launched in 2019, but it has enough fuel so it will work for almost seven years. So, there is no doubt about our competence as far as technology is concerned. It was our misfortune that we could not land, land last time. Lander failed. And Orbiter is working fine. It is giving very good images. Uh, it was launched in 2019. And uh, this time, Chandrayaan 3 is almost similar to Chandrayaan 2. This lander white failed last time. When it was landing, it got slightly tilted while it was landing the last mile that is two, two kilometers above the moon surface. And there was a bug in our software and many other elements also. So due to that, generally when anything is landing, we do retrofiring. So, so that the speed of the falling object gets reduced step by step and finally it lands with a zero velocity. That's the time when it tilted and there was a bug in our software. So due to that, instead of reducing the speed, it increased the speed. So it almost got doubled and it crash landed. So it was similar to what we did during the first time. So that was the failure of our Chandrayaan 2. Everybody saw this picture on TV also. Hopefully they will not repeat this time. These are some of the few pictures. We have a very high resolution camera, one fit camera, what I was mentioning, 0.3 meter resolution. It can take image over moon also. It has taken images from where Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 landed. They were manned missions. So we still see the remnants of Apollo 11 and 12 lander. Because moon there is, nobody is there, no atmosphere is also there, so everything is intact as it is. And that is visible, even the image taken in 2021, we can find out where that lander landed, remnants of that. And uh, this, these are all the missions landed on the equator of the moon. While we want to land on the South Pole, and South Pole is considered to be a very hazardous area because there are a lot of craters and boulders. So we were trying to find out a safe terrain over that and land it safely. So that is how our this thing will do. So as you can see, this is the terrain where we are trying to land. And this is the whole scheme we have worked out. As I said, it is almost similar to Chandrayaan 2, our configuration. Only we have strengthened many of the things. And uh, this is how we have 
done our journey till now that is today is april to uh, august 12 so august 5th we entered into the moon insertion that is called loi lunar orbit insertion that was a very critical operation nobody noticed it but it came in newspaper also it was a very critical operation for us technologically because if you miss out that point you don't do properly you will go past moon so you will not enter into the moon orbit so forget about landing and all we have done it two times earlier third time also we did it very successfully so now we are into the orbit of moon we had initial five earth buns then it went towards moon entered into the moon gravitational effect so now it is moving around moon at a height of 174 by 1474 km as on yesterday so that is the orbit it is now yes we are slowly will be correcting it to a circular orbit this is elliptical orbit so elliptical to circular that corrections are going on and finally the d day that is 23rd august before that on 17th august these two modules will separate lander module and something equivalent to the orbiter is we call it propulsion module this time so that propulsion and lander module will separate at the height of 100 km 100 by 100 km on 17th august and 17 to 23 that propulsion module will move like a satellite over the moon it will remain there for 3 to 6 month whatever fuel is there inside it so we assume that it will be around 3 to 6 month lander module will start its descent from the height of 30 km on 23rd august so that is our d day and how it will happen so from at 30 km 2 hours before the landing landing will be at 5 hours and 47 minutes in the evening that is 1747 and it will be a 17 minute affair after that so at 1747 two hours before that at around 330 we will be uploading all the commands and we will be checking the health of the lander and we will decide that whether we should land today or no if we find something some problem and set, then we have to switch over to redundant systems see the other images and other thing also and decide whether to land or no if we decide not to land we will do it a second attempt which will be the last attempt on 27th so four days after the 23rd on 23rd mostly we will be able to land on 23rd we'll start landing on 23rd at height of 30 km speed will be around 1.68 km per second from there it will come to 7.5 km which will take around 690 second from that to it will go to 6.8 km it will hover around there for 10 seconds then it will move to 800 meters and at the height of 800 meter we will see everything is programmed properly most of the work has happened in amdabad here all the algorithms and the processing part of that at 800 meter we will try to see with the camera images and the stored image we will find out whether we are at the right spot or not or we have gone to some different place than what which has been programmed if it is a right spot we will start the descent so from 800 at 800 the speed will be almost 0 meter per second plus minus 2 meter per second then 800 to 150 it will straight away come down as a vertical free fall descent and at 150 meter it will again uh, do many other hovering in initially it will do hovering and then try to find out whether it can straight away descend at that vertically down if it find that it is slightly deviating then it will move horizontally for few kilo few meters and then go up to 60 km and from there 60 meters and from there it will straight away descend so we have two options only at 800 meter if it find that it is totally at a different place then everything will be autonomous means it will be a autonomous landing like pilot will decide where to land same thing similar the computer will decide from various input sense sensor images that where will be the safe place to descend this is a very hazardous area that's why it is very complicated algorithms are there hopefully we will be able to succeed on that date so it will be doing like this just pictorially i am showing from 7.4 to 6.5 various sensor inputs it will take so this time we have concentrated with instead of image processing more on the various sensors so this is how it will find out it will go to 800 meter from 800 to 150 will be vertical descent hovering then move horizontally either 150 or 60 meter and then land and after the landing after two days earlier the program was within four years four hours we will start rover operation but uh, now it has been decided that we'll do it after two days so after landing 23rd 25th 
will do this rover operation. Ramp will be installed, rover will come out automatically. It will move around 500 meters around that area, do the experiment and send the signal. SAC has contributed for almost 11 subsystems there. So thank you. This is the sequence we expect and hopefully what clapping you are doing today will happen on 23rd and we hope for that. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste and good evening. Uh, Dr. Joshi, our chief guest, uh, Kartike Bhai Sarabhai, uh, Dr. Pankaj Bhai, Dr. Nilesh Desai, my friend Savan Bhai, AMA members, ladies and gentlemen. I'm indeed honored and privileged to talk about the great founder of this very institution, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, a legendary industrialist, scientist, visionary, and a great institutional builder on his 104th birthday. When we say global, we mean institutions that aimed and achieved global standards and scale. As I frankly tell many of our AMA visitors that not only we are on Vikram Sarabhai Mark, but we are in an institutional enclave, AMA, Atira, PRL, IIM, they are all in the same enclave not very far from the ISRO headquarters. We in Ahmedabad are really blessed to have visionaries such as Dr. Vikram Sarabhai and Kasturbhai Lalbhai, you know, who shaped the destiny of the city in many ways, especially in education and research. Dr. Sarabhai was a prolific institution builder and he practically built one institution each year from 1947 till the time he died in 71. Actually, he built 38 institutions. I'll not name each of the possibility of time, but I can classify them in about five categories. The first is scientific research, space, atomic energy, electronics and communication. 21 institutions, but then many of these institutions like, you know, the launch, rocket launch and all were merged with the parent body, ISRO. It's like, uh, to name a few, it's like PRL, ISRO and so on. And next category is textile research. It's only one institute, Atira, but this was really the lab of Vikram Sarabhai, and that was the first institution in 1947, when he was just 28 years old, and he had returned from Cambridge after his PhD. And this is set up with the request of Kasturbhai Lalbhai, who was, you know, again, a great visionary and a textile mill owner, and who really wished that a textile mill should modernize with more research. Third category is educational and educational research. There are five institutions, including IIM, AMA, ORG, Baroda. Fourth category is business and industries of the Sarabhai group. There are 10 industries, and some famous names are Sarabhai and Chemicals, Surit, Gegi, and many more. The fifth category is performing arts, and we have our very own Darpan Academy, nurtured by none other than Muralidi Ben, and of course, Malika Ben now. It's not only about establishing the institution, but about nurturing them in different ways. His scientific approach, entrepreneurial zeal, compassion for others, and extraordinary people skills that made these long-lasting institutions, each with its unique objectives and culture. I will talk about his some attributes and qualities as an institutional builder. First is choice of leadership. He was very particular about choosing the right leader for an institution. Besides qualification and experience, Dr. Sarabhai could make sure that these leaders had human qualities like compassion, concern for the environment. He could instill a feeling of patriotism in them. And you have you've seen, we all know that he has mentored great leaders like, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Abdul Kalam, uh, who later on rose to become the president of our country, and uh, of course, Satish, uh, um, Professor Yashpal, and many more, and even Ravi Mathai of IIM Ahmedabad. Second is location. 
For example, Atira was lo very much located in Ahmedabad because here this was known in those days as the Manchester of the East, having many textile mills, and that's why it was very much here. And it is on these lines later on that similar institutions like Bitra and Sitra were instituted on these lines. Third attribute is recruitment. Selecting the right person, especially for research institutions, is not an easy task. He liked recruiting freshers so that they could not carry any bias or, or any, you know, uh, notions. He did this both for Atira as well as PRL and many of these young scientists enrolled for the doctoral programs in these very institutions. Next is organizational and operating culture. He could inspire his senior team members to create an appropriate culture. Dr. Sarabhai believed that culture was not only important for scientific research, but for any organization, be it a business enterprise, a government department, or a university. According to him, no innovative mission can be achieved without an operating, appropriate operating culture. Next is interacting and overlapping clusters. That was his particular style. And this was one of the most strategies uh, Vikrambai used in creating institutions. Creating a cluster of individuals with whom he interacted and through whom he could interact with others. Classic example was Atira itself, where there were three clusters. You know, one was the advisors, the other was the researchers, and third were the stakeholders, like the mill owners. And finally, the sixth attribute, a most important part, was his leadership style. He always believed that an institution based on caring for people gave assurance to individuals to innovate and to respond to situations creatively. And Padmanabh has given you great examples. He chose people who are willing to take risk, also believed in developing people systematically. This was one reason why he chose young people and provided them an opportunity to grow. He was a master of managing people. To quote the words of Dr. Uh, P.R. Pisher Roy, who is an eminent meteorologist, he would give half a dozen of problems to half a dozen of different people. Each would be made to feel that he was Dr. Sarabhai's favorite and therefore had been entrusted with the problem nearest to Dr. Sarabhai's heart. He was a master communicator, communicating with subordinates, with senior leaders, colleagues, academicians, government and political leaders, and so many institutions abroad through which he liaisoned. He was very much accessible to all. Even when in his overseas trips, he could allocate time to meet young Indian professionals. With his vision, he could persuade many of them to return to India and contribute to our country's growth. For decision making, he believed in collective opinion, like the opinion of a committee of advisors or a board of advisors. To put it in his own words, there is no leader and there is no lead. A leader, if one chooses to identify one, has to be a cultivator rather than a manufacturer. He has to provide the soil and the overall climate and the environment in which the seed can grow. To sum up his style, I'll quote the words of Kasturbai Lalbai, his humility, his way of mixing with people, people to work, his untiring efforts, work for the upliftment of the country endeared him to one and all. Finally, I will talk about the you know, management institutions he founded because that was a topic dear to him. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was one of the found, was founders of IIM Ahmedabad and he valued management education. And just like research, and IIM Ahmedabad was founded in 1962 and that time actually the government wanted to bring a management school in Mumbai and Calcutta and Mumbai wanted it to be in a university. But Vikram Sarabhai was Adamant, Kasturbai Lalbai encouraged him. Vikrambai went to the States, talked to Harvard University, who sponsored the program, and very much the IIM was located in Ahmedabad. <laughs> but much before he founded IIM, he founded AMA in 1956. You know. <laughs> 
See, at that time, you know, he foresaw the need for professional management when there was little or no management in this country. AMA is one of the founder members of our apex body, the All India Management Association. Dr. Sarabhai led AMA for, as a president for four years. And the office was at Calico Mills. And as activities pro proliferated, AMA moved to its rented office in the Bank of India building at Badra, Ahmedabad in 1966. Many of the meetings were held in Atira. Then AMA had its first on premises in Navranpura in 85. And then that time AMA was, was sort of on a takeoff stage. And then we were very fortunate that Atira provided space to AMA. And this very building complex was inaugurated in August 1997. That's over 40 years when AMA was founded. Then, of course, AMA, I will say, in terms of activities, grew exponentially. And AMA has grown and rendered services not only to the management you know, fraternity and the business community, but also to various sections of the society, because it has maintained its core values, its ethos, and functioning in a system that was initiated by the founder. As many of you know, AMA, uh, the scale at which AMA is doing activities is unparalleled in India. There are 67 management associations. Nobody has this kind of complex. We do about six, 600 paid programs a year, about 200 open forums like the one we are today. We have diploma programs. We do other programs like you know students, summer workshops, and so many annual events we have. And we have been awarded the best association for over 18 times by IMA. Last year, we celebrated 25 years of AMA's campus year with special programs. And today's event is a tribute to its illustrious founder, and we assure all of our members and all of you and the citizens of the city that the Ahmedabad Management Association, or AMA, what we call in short, AMA will always stand for always moving ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Divya Bhai. Uh, certainly, uh, quite a bit of you know uh, 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 insights on the facets and the institutions built by uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. We'll invite our chief guest Kartike Bhai for hearing something which would be certainly uh, important and new to us also, hopefully. But uh, last year, I would comment and Kartike, please. But this 25th year that Divyesh Bhai mentioned. We had a fabulous program and that movie, I think we should do it again, sir. It, that was some French uh, documentary yes. and such insights. What we are talking today as a vision of the government of the private is what that movie before, what, 60 years? That movie has said. So, yes, but Kathy Bibi, over to you. <coughs> Thank you very much and uh, always a pleasure at EMA. Uh, to uh, to talk about a variety of issues so dear to Vikram Bhai and today of course remembering him it's late I realize for for all of us so just uh, briefly because I think there are lots of things to share and I'm sure we have lots of centenaries lots of years when we can we can share other things you know um, we've talk, spoken about several aspects of, of his his life and his personality uh, when I was uh, a student here, and uh, it was mentioned, Pankaj Bhai uh, Gajar mentioned about the GZA, the Group for the Improvement of Science Education, and later on, which became Community Science Center. It was a room in PRL. Uh, so the idea was, how does scientists get involved in basic education, and doing experiments and others, and we got there. And I seem to be pretty sure that I would like to do physics. It was something Papa did. It was something which excited very much. And I, I went to Cambridge with that vision or that view that I would do it. And I was really enjoying it. And then there was a series which started coming out in the London Times. And it was called India's Disintegrating Democracy. That uh, now that the British have left, uh, India's democracy is not going to last for more than a few more years. And it would irritate me totally. The whole day would get spoiled. And uh, I would discuss with friends what it was. But I realized that my own experience of what I was saying was just not adequate 
I knew in the gut that everything you just said was wrong, but I did not have words to, uh, to contradict that or to show any other evidence. And so I wrote to Papa, I said, uh, I, this word development was new. I would like to understand where India's journey is, where are we going, what are we doing? And in fact, I got, uh, he sent me a whole series of maybe about 10 or 15 books on development at that time. And I'd, I'd gone through it. In fact, my, I would discuss with my English roommate and he would say, you are filling my brain with so much data I will never use it in my life again <laughs> about India and its statistics. But I really got into that. And then that year, there was a, there was the cover story of, again, the Sunday supplement showing the drought in Bihar. It was the last one of our major droughts. And I uh, asked my father, I said, can I, when I come back in the summer holidays, can I actually spend time in Bihar just to understand what is happening? So I did that. About 15, 20 days, I was going around in an ST bus and hot and seeing things. But I saw what voluntary people, what people were doing, organizations were doing uh, for elevation. That was also the time when I could attend several talks which were going on on, uh, uh, again, what was explained earlier, the, the, the experiments of what became SITE finally, using satellites for education. And I remember standing in the back row there, just listening to the talks, I was a student, uh, and people would ask him that, why is the Department of Space concerned about uh, things like education? Why are you interfering in telecommunication, point-to-point -point communication? Because today, even a child might know that there is something connected with the satellite, uh, with my communication and what I'm holding. But at that time, Vikram Bhai probably never saw a four-function handheld device, a calculator. The calculator was not there. I remember very clearly that all this was achieved, but there was no calculator. Uh, and uh, that calculator came a few years, few years afterwards. Uh, so, so the whole thinking and convincing people that space uh, had this huge potential for the journey and the leapfrog, as was mentioned, India needs to do. To, to go to a completely different level. Uh, India needs to do that. And two beliefs in science. One was the first belief, which was that every citizen needs to have a basic scientific literacy, a scientific temper. And that that will help you no matter what you are doing. And the second thing was applying science to actually the problems of the nation. So these were two sort of aspects which were simultaneously uh, going on. So I, I started understanding that I knew my father as a scientist, but when he, I was in these forums, I understand that he was also talking education, he was talking a number of things. So when I, after the Bihar thing, and I decided that I would like to work in this field of development, I had to tell him once when he was there, and if he was passing by England, I would get a full weekend, but it was wonderful because I would get one-to-one -one time with him, which one would not necessarily hear. And, uh, uh, I said I would like to go into this and I was not sure what reaction because you know people have this feeling that if I am a doctor you are a doctor, if I am a scientist you are a scientist. But it was not that. He, he equally saw himself as someone working in development and national development, national progress. And so as a, as a nation builder all these are different aspects but they finally came together with this very strong feeling that we were in this period of developing India. And India needs to take off. It's not just the rocket needs to take off, but India needs to take off and, and go somewhere. And, and for that, if you don't put the right directions, we will become imitative. In fact, uh, uh, that, that particular Nilesh Bhai mentioned, showed that one on space and the moon. If you see that sentence, it actually says that we are not in competition of going to the moon. It's not saying we won't go to the moon. It says we are not in competition because we are not imitative. We know our priorities. And at that time, our priority was not to go to the moon. I mean, that was not our first priority. Today, he would have said it is, but he would have been proud of the fact that instead of imitating that race, we had a very different method. It was not only that, of course, our rockets were, perhaps couldn't put our payload, but the point is we found a solution which was, which was wonderful. And this competitiveness of space, is not what we are doing. Today, in fact, 
Russia has announced, right, that they want to send a rocket which will take a photograph the day before we land. That is not why we are doing it. We are not doing it just to prove that we can do it one day earlier than Russia or one day later than Russia. We are trying to say that our space program or our any of the other programs are really foundations for this nation. Now, that is the spirit in which when I came back finally, and, yeah, of course, he was no more, but there were just two paragraphs written on what the Nehru Foundation would do at the Thaltej Tekra site. And that was to say that he had got a feeling that while during the independence struggle, common citizens and everyone felt that it was equally their job to fight for freedom or to take national causes, somehow after, develop, after freedom, people felt that now it was the Sarkar's job. It was government we did development, not us. We did our own thing. And he wanted to change that. It is changing rapidly now. And if you take even what industry did, these were some of the industries which did do it. See, saw their role as a dual role. Then, of course, they do business. Of course, they, they, they do it very efficiently. But they're also doing something for the country. So even in the business, Mr. Rajya, they, some of the latest things which are bro bring, being brought in. And today, for instance, that same tradition goes on. Uh, my son is trying to build this uh, something for the TB because that's a very big uh, challenge today. Can we, can we solve problems? But the whole pro thing starts by saying what is India's problem and how do you solve it. And the leapfrog is really that. Leapfrog is that we don't imitate a development trajectory which has happened elsewhere, which in any case is a disaster because that uh, fossil fuel based economies, the way say a Los Angeles city is built is an absolute disaster in the global sense. Climate change which used to be something which Hardly anyone knew out. When I started work and things here, people were saying, what is this environment? But the yeah, word was not even known. Today, anyone will, whether rightly or wrongly, they know okay, our climate is changing. This is not the rain you are getting. This is not the drought you are getting. And as, as uh, Nilishbhi was saying, people might not know of SAC, but they know that whole area is satellite. <laughs> huh? You are the rickshaw driver. You satellite driver. In fact, we had a, a lighter side, we had a driver uh, in, in Bombay and he would be asked, what are you doing with your He would say, you're making a That was his view of what nuclear science was. But satellite is certainly known. <coughs> so SAC is, is known in Ahmedabad and it's a landmark there, although there's no board which says satellite area. But so this leapfrog, really starts, and why is it so critical today? Because the Prime Minister has said, as you must have known, that 2047, which is 100 years of India, 100 years of PRL, and 100 years of me also, by the way, because I was, I was, I was, I was also born at that same time, of the, of just after independence. Uh, that date, he would like to see India as a developed country. He, he wants once and for all, Prime Minister Modi wants once and for all this tag that we are an underdeveloped country to be removed. That's not all that many years from now. It's a very ambitious, it's an ambitious target. And the point is, where does Vikram Sarabhai come into it? That, that same ambition which he had of pushing, that 25, 26 years as we go towards the last quarter of the 100 years, 75 to 100, that quarter has to be thought through differently. It has to be thought through differently, and that's where the critical thinking comes, that what will Ahmedabad be 25 years from now? Will it just be an urban sprawl the way it is? Will it be something else? Do we, do we focus everything on just a few cities, or do we develop several metropolitan areas? The whole concept of a city. So this is, for young people, a very exciting time, because you have to think of development without a model being in front of you. And that's what happened in the space, that our model is not because we've imitated anyone. Other people might imitate us, but we are not imitated. At the same time, we are looking for the best. I think many photographs were also shown of people going, uh, going internationally, you would send people. And in fact, the first employee of the Nehru Foundation, uh, one of the first IIM graduates, uh, Prasad Vepa, he immediately sent him to MIT uh, to, to write the paper, because at that time, ISRO had not been formed and he couldn't get funding to write the uh, 
DP, if you like, the de development plan of, of the site experiment. Who would write it, who would fund it? So he funded it and it went to MIT. But this whole thing of young people coming up, getting to the best educational institutions, which is happening today, but critically thinking and not saying how we can be like someone else, but be something different. And the development of the vision 2047, which the PM wants, I think that's where some of the key teachings of Vikram Bhai, key methodology of him, whether it is for business or whether it is for NGOs or for cities, I think that's what is required. So I'll close just now on that, but that's the subject for another discussion sometime that we will have, that what should India be in 2047, what should business be like in 2047, and how we do that. But that's another subject. Huh? So thank you very much, and it's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Kartike Bhai. Uh, I know, a visionary. Kartike Bhai says that the development was the focus. Everything, this science was used. And I think, Dr. Desai, you also started when you said that uh, uh, this uh, harnessing space tech for societal benefits. That's how he said. Uh, so it was not about only the technology research and purely the tech, but it is application. I think Joshi Saib also said and Professor Gajar mentioned the same thing that it was more about that agri-science, telecommunication, textiles. It was more about development at large and the vision that he has built uh, through the institutions that he has built that uh, uh, I think. Of course, Bikesh Bhai, you mentioned that when somebody would have named him Vikram, you would have not known how many Vikram this gentleman is going to break, uh, how many records, how many and, and what legacy that we are. And as I mentioned, we are only lucky to have uh, you know, him uh, for India as well as certainly and certainly for our city that our city is known through so many institutions that he has built so over a period of time. So thank you ladies and gentlemen, special thanks Joshi Saib, uh, uh, Professor Gajjar, Dr. Desai, Divyesh Bhai and Kartike Bhai. I think this was certainly insightful and uh, I am sure all of us have, have seen certainly uh, Dr. Desai's presentation went deep into text, absolutely engaging. And, and, and I, I was just telling him that we should have, certainly we should keep this, that and the biggest part of the story, is, as I would understand as a layman, is the cost of this Chandrayaan going to the moon versus all the cost that other developed nations are. Uh, that, that could be one, one story also probably or one session that we could do. So thank you Karti KB especially and everybody for joining us this evening. And uh, I think Gujarat, uh, Gujarat uh, Science Academy would like to honor, uh, as I understand, uh, uh, some people, I don't know, Gujarat Science Academy. Uh, so so would, is there something that you would like to honor everybody yeah. by way of? Yes. So please, I, I think uh, your honors, you can do the honors for that, please. Unmesh um, Bhai, is there some, something that we want to do before, before we part, part company? Achira. Sir, this is from Gujarat Science Academy. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put this. <laughs> Next, uh, next we will like to um, Josie sir for sparing your time and giving information about the Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Next we have uh, Dr. Desai and we should, let us pray that uh, we remain successful on August 23rd and see Lender and Hover on the moon land. Next, thanks to Divya sir for giving us opportunity to be a part of this uh, program. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Gajar, for uh, giving a lecture on uh, science educator on how Vikram, Bhai, Vikram Sarabhai wanted it to be.
So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and hope to meet again. Y yes, is there something that yeah, you want yeah. to? Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us in this particular event. We have some books sponsored by Gujarat Science Academy. Name of the book is G uh, Jit. It is in Gujarati and English. Today we have with us Gujarati version. If anybody wants uh, English version, they can just let us know in Department of Physics, Gujarat University. But you can have uh, Jit Gujarati version from here if you want. Thank you, everybody.